Okay, um, we'll go ahead and get started here in just a minute. Okay, I think we're good to go. So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to another CodeHS webinar, a uh, part of our October webinar series. I'm just gonna give you guys a couple introductions. Um, I'm Alicia Muzon. Oops, let me go back, sorry about that. I'm Alicia Muzon, I'm an account executive here at CodeHS. I work with many of the teachers who are interested in using CodeHS and want to explore our curriculum. I also have my colleague Brian Handy here with me, so he'll be helping to field questions. Um, at any point, you can ask a question with the Q&A, so it should be located in your top left corner. If you just want to chat in the question, we'll be sure to answer it. So for the agenda for this webinar is going to last about 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to cover the top five most common questions that teachers tend to ask about CodeHS. <laughs> If you're new to CodeHS or for those teachers who've used our site but want to learn a little bit more information, we hope that we'll be able to answer those questions today. So let's get started. Is CodeHS free? This is our number one asked question. Yes, CodeHS is free. We offer all of our curriculum in its entirety for free. So teachers can create a free teacher account and access all of our student facing curriculum. There are no strings attached and any teacher can use CodeHS with their students. You can access all of our curriculum, uh, the basic tools that we have to use in your classroom, as well as some in-course assessments such as quizzes or built-in projects. And then I feel like one of the most common misconceptions is that you're not able to see your students' progress within the course or grade their work on the free plan, uh, but you can do both. We do offer a paid subscription that includes all of the teacher tools and resources we have, like the classroom progress views. However, the free plan does include a lot of the basic tools that teachers can utilize in their classrooms. So on the free plan, if you want to view your students progress, um, you want a little bit more insight on how your students are moving along in the course you do have a detailed view of each individual student's progress. So after you've created a section or a class and enrolled your students, you'll have a roster. So once you click into your roster, then you will click into a student's name and then their progress will appear, such as this. You have the option to click into each module or lesson to get a more granular view of what the student has completed, what they're working on, and activities that they're still needing to complete. Um, when teachers are ready to review their students' work, they can access the code review dashboard, which allows teachers to view student help questions and student activity submissions. So you can easily click into a student's assignment and you'll be able to help them with an activity, provide feedback and grade their submissions. So let's move on to the next question. Is everything web-based? Yes, students write and run their code directly from the browser. We do have offline activities and assessments. However, they're optional and they are not required to complete the course. Many teachers are worried that they'll have to get special permission from their IT departments to use CodeHS, but all you and your students need is a computer or laptop, internet access, and a web browser. There's no need to download any software, no plugins, or no browser extensions. So we strive to make teachers experience with CodeHS as simple as possible. Students would write and run their own code from our online code editor, would which looks something like this. And they can check their code against our auto graders to see if they've completed the assignment correctly. <laughs> now, before we switch gears, uh, Brian, do we have any questions so far? It doesn't look like any, anything's come through yet. Okay, great. 
So next question, I'm a new computer science teacher. Is Code HS right for me? The answer to that is yes. What we began to notice were there are many schools who wanted to offer computer science courses but didn't have the teachers or the resources to do so. We wanted to bridge that gap and expand computer science offerings to all schools. For teachers who have little to no programming experience or no computer science background, we offer ready-made curriculum to use with your students. We have a curriculum pathway for um, for you to use for the most beginner students, leading up to AP computer science courses for more advanced students. We also offer professional development courses that can help prepare teachers to run successful computer science classes. Those are offered both online and in person. Our PD courses cover topics like debugging strategies and teaching programming courses in a blended classroom. We also offer account management support. Uh, many teachers decide to upgrade to our paid pro plan for the dedicated account management support. Um, the account managers would provide technical and curriculum support throughout the school year, assist with setting up teacher sections and demoing all of the teacher tools we have available. On to the next slide. All right, now for experienced co uh, computer science teachers, is Code HS appropriate for them? And the answer to that is yes, it is. Um, we have tools that are designed for teachers with all levels of experience. One of those tools is our Create tool, and that allows you to plug in any coursework that you may have already developed, whether it's a resource like a document or a video, or if it's an exercise like a quiz or a coding activity. We also have tools designed to help streamline your grading, such as the code review dashboard that allows you to view and run student code, provide feedback, and assign a grade of pass or needs review. Additionally, our auto grader ensures that any work that is submitted meets the basic criteria for that activity. CodeHS is designed to grow with you as your needs change, and we regularly update our existing courses and develop new courses that are aligned with the CSTA standards. This allows you to easily plug in new courses without having to develop your own curriculum. The next question here is what is the best Code HS course for my class? We have a full course catalog available with curriculum designed for students with varying levels of coding experience. For beginners, we generally recommend starting out with one of our intro courses, and we do have a few of those available. Um, intro to JavaScript and Intro to Python teach students programmatic problem solving, and they also equip them with the foundational coding skills that they need to start writing their own programs. Web design teaches students how to create their own websites using HTML and CSS. Cybersecurity teaches foundational cybersecurity topics, including networking fundamentals, software security, and the basics of cryptography. Computing Ideas is an exploratory course that exposes students to a wide variety of computer science topics, where they learn the basics of programming with Carol the dog, the basics of designing a web page, and how information and images are represented with computers. Students will create a portfolio on the web of projects they build throughout that course. Advanced students can test their coding skills in either AP Computer Science Principles or AP Computer Science in Java, both of which are pre-approved by College Board. We have a recommended 6 to 12 pathway available on our site, and we'll send out a message with that link in just a moment. And you can always reach out to us to receive a personalized recommendation. So that wraps up our five most common questions. Um, and it does look like we have had a couple of questions come in through the chat channel there. Um, so the first question there is, who facilitates these sessions? Is there training available to use the curriculum? Um, so for that, we do have both online professional development available as well as in-person professional development. In either of those cases, you would work with a member from our account management team, and they would be able to provide feedback for you as you're working through those courses or lead sessions in person. Um, we can also send out a link to the part on our site that gives a little bit more information around the professional development. Next question here is, is the curriculum appropriate for after school programs? Uh, we do have a lot of schools that do use our courses in an after school program environment. Depending on the length of that after school program and how much time you have with your students, you might want to look at one of our condensed courses, something like Intro to Programming with Carol or Intro to Programming with Tracy the Turtle. 
Uh, those are both designed to be kind of light touch courses that don't require a ton of time from students and can be great for an after school program. If you do have a little bit more time, then one of our intro courses might be a good choice there. And the last question here is, could this curriculum be adapted for middle school? Um, so we absolutely do have courses that are designed for middle school as well. Um, again, either our condensed courses or the intro courses tend to be the most appropriate for those students. Uh, but we do have that full six to 12 pathway available on the site. Did we have any other questions before we wanted to wrap this webinar up? Now jumping back into the course recommendations here, um, if anybody does have a specific scenario that they would like to talk through or any goals that you're hoping to achieve with your students, you can always reach out to us directly and schedule some time for a quick phone call where we can talk a little bit more about where your students are at, where you would like them to be, and some different pathways that can help them accomplish that. Well, great. Well, thank you all so much for joining our webinar today. If you do happen to be teaching AP Java this year, our next webinar, AP Java Checklist, Top Items for a Successful Year, will be Tuesday, October 30th at 2.30 Pacific Time, 5.30 Eastern Time. We hope to see you all there. Thanks so much for joining.